one molecule uh, would do. Why is that so good, and why is that a well, standard? The reason uh, science likes that is it helps me understand how the chemistry of life happens. We do it molecule by molecule. So my study shows marked improvement. When people say, okay, Terry, so what's the mechanism? I can lay out theories as to what the mechanisms are, but I don't have any molecular studies that are going to be able to say, this is what happened, we changed this chemical reaction here, we changed that of kappa B, we uh, influenced IL-10, IP-12. I can't do any of that. But you're having a systems biological right. state change. So we're having a systems approach. We're fixing many broken systems. Going forward, I'm going to be able to do this very detailed nutrition evaluation at the baseline and at the end. And so what I predict that we'll see is a wide variety of nutritional abnormalities at the beginning that will be largely corrected by my study intervention. And so we'll see uh, more appropriate physiology at the 12 month. So we're, we're going to, we're adding, because I have more money now, we're adding a bunch of uh, basic science uh, chemical studies in addition to the MRI studies. I think Montel would be interested in talking with you. <laughs> well, if you have a connection with Montel, let me know. I don't know, but it sounds like maybe we should help put you in touch with him because he has everything to lose. I mean, at least he's juicing now. He's involved with this juicing company, but he's really into vegetables and juicing heavily. Where are you at about juicing? It sounds like you want us to eat nine plates or nine cups. So of- uh, in our study, I tell folks, if you can't get all nine cups in, juice what you can't and drink it. And we have several people who do that. Juicing is fine. You'll get more of the enzymes, biologic activity, a lot of nutrients. You give up on the fiber. So it can feel a little crazy to me that people juice, and then they have to take a lot of extra fiber so they can keep pooping. My approach is I put it in a uh, Vitamix on high, pulverize it into a a juice, so add some water, and I'll drink that. I've retained the fiber. Uh, the Vitamix breaks it down uh, so it's more readily absorbed, probably a higher absorption rate, but then I'm not losing the fiber. There are benefits to juicing, but losing that fiber gets to be a problem too. One thing we left out in this is the issue of fruits. The whole food pyramid is so off. It's a joke, and it's been a joke a long time. And then there's a whole faction of people that say, don't touch fructose, even in fruits. Don't eat too much fruit. You'll blow up and get fat. What is your take on fruits? Talk to us. I think fruit's going to be okay. In general, if you look at uh, my plan, you got nine cups. And you can have fruit that's going to have to fit in the all colored all the way through category. Okay. You count it as part of your nine cups. So that's berries, peaches, oranges, plums apricots, nectarines. It is not apples, pears, or bananas. Now, I let people have those. But Wait, Hippocrates my... is telling me that we can't have our apple a day? I'm confused. No, no, you can. What I'm telling you is I want you to get nine cups, you know, the green sulfur, the color. Right. If you're still hungry, have that banana. In general, two or three servings of fruit a day, if you've got six servings of non-starchy vegetables, it's going to be okay. But the more fruit you have, the greater the risk you have of growing the carbohydrate-loving bacteria in your bowels. I don't think many of us have heard that. If you have uh, berries, peaches, plums, prunes, there's tremendous antioxidant benefits, long history of uh, medicinal healthful use. I think that's going to be okay if you have uh, two servings of colored fruits or three servings of colored fruits a day. Having said that, we are all absolutely unique. And I I encourage people to have a food symptom diary. If my observation is, you know, even having that uh, apple every day seems to give me more trouble, then yes, stop. We all need to pay more attention to our unique responses. You remind me of the doctor of long ago. 
the doctors that would tell their patients to listen to their bodies. We don't find that very often now. Well, we certainly need to be paying more attention. I, I think it's very important to have a personalized approach. Our clinical trial, there is an overarching plan, but we personalize everything to the individual. Even the food plan, as people enter the study, they're doing their daily logs. We're calling every week, uh, talking with them about their observations, uh, and then helping that person see the patterns and uh, tweak uh, the diet for them. Our goal is that by the time the person is done with the study, they know how to read their bodies very well, to read their reactions when they're having problems, and then they can sit down and reflect on what were the likely triggers and make the necessary corrections. The work you're doing is really fabulous. In your clinical trials, are you going to be looking at all at the hormone balance or state of the MS patients? Well, we will not because I don't have money for that part. Okay. Doing clinical trials, you only get to do what you can get money for. Right. I'm very excited. The university did create a fund for me to raise money to, and that will, the greater success that I have, uh, that will give me more flexibility in being able to design the trials the way I think would be most beneficial. You're such an inspiration. I'm so excited about the work that you're doing, and I'm so appreciative that you came on today to be our guest on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to say? A couple more things. I I, I, uh, would encourage people to pick up the books, buy the books, buy the lectures, uh, because uh, that will help support the research. Because I'm donating the profits from uh, the books and CDs, DVDs to support the clinical trials. Very good. Uh, It'd help us get pilot data, which I can then use to write grants for the NIH, the MS Society, larger foundations. So we could all have a role to play, either in making donations outright or buying the books, CDs, DVDs, because all of those proceeds will end up getting used to support more clinical trials. I'm sure your family is very proud of the work that you're doing and so proud of the fact that you are in recovery from MS. I'm sure they're so happy. Well, it's a very different future. My, my kids were in junior high. My daughter's in junior high. My son was in high school. They could tell I was hugely struggling. Uh, they knew it was eminent that I'd be becoming disabled, unable to work, that I couldn't sit up anymore at the table. I had to be fully reclined at meals uh, or in bed. That was the future uh, that my kids saw. And then for them to see this amazing transformation in my health, and actually in their health because we changed what they were eating as well, they understand in a much more visceral, experiential level the connection between the choices we make every day in our foods, our actions, our behaviors, and the health we have or fail to have. Thank you so much for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from, and listening to Dr. Terry Walls, the author of Mining My Mitochondria, the second edition, How I Overcame Secondary Progressive Multiple Sclerosis and Got Out of My Wheelchair, and also Food and Brain Health, Lectures and Supplemental Materials. Please go to terrywalls.com, T-E-R-R-Y-W-A-H-L-S.com. I hope that you will come back on the show as our guest six months or a year from now. I'd like to hear how you're doing, and we'd like to support your work. Thank you so much, Dr. Walls. Thank you.